Good morning, good evening, good night, wherever you may be. It is my Mike Martins bringing you another housing discussion. And I got a really good one. I got a really good countdown. I've been taking some notes, doing some fact checking, doing some uh, work in the background here, getting some good content for you guys. Underwater mortgages, what does that mean? Underwater mortgages is basically when you owe more money than what your house is worth. Or the market is falling and you paid you paid a million dollars for your house and now your house is worth 900000 And if you sell the house for 900000 you got to pay the out-of-pocket 100000 you're out. So basically, people owe more for their house than what their house is valued at or condo or parcel of land or townhouse or whatever you want, a trailer, whatever whatever you're mortgaging or whatever you have a lien on from the bank. So let's kick it off. Number six, number six, number six, underwater mortgages comes to New Zealand. Yep, New Zealand is number six. What is an underwater mortgage? So let's, let's, let's go into the... Uh, the verification here. I got this open here. Sorry. Another water mortgage is a home purchased purchase loan with higher principal than the free market value of the home. This situation can occur when property values are falling. In an underwater mortgage, the homeowner may not have any equity available for credits. An underwater mortgage can potentially prevent a borrower from refinancing or selling the home unless they have cash to pay the loss out of pocket. So that's what's happening. Now let's get to let's get to number six. I already gave it away, and it's New Zealand mortgage debt tops two hundred billion. This is from March 6, twenty fifteen, but it gives us some really good numbers to work with on this one. And and back checking from some of the work I have done, and articles I have read, and graphs that I have went over. Right now, New Zealand, from what I have, is looking at one hundred and fifty two thousand homes that are right now underwater this is saying something else here this is saying that it's actually a little bit higher according to the debt uh, a, a loan to value that's out there in total it's giving a different number here it's actually saying it's a lot more than that but i'm thinking it's actually 152,000 in new zealand that are currently underwater with their mortgages new zealand has saw drops but not significant enough to put a lot of people underwater because a lot of the homes in now in 2019, we're in January 2019, a lot of the homes that were bought in 2015 still have a bit of equity in them. But now with New Zealand uh, banning foreign ownership and banning this and banning that and protecting the Kiwi proper, people are starting to realize that a lot of New Zealanders do not own their own homes. A lot of them are renters. A lot of it's foreign owned. So it is a lot of problems happening in New Zealand and New Zealand's in crisis mode to lose its identity in the next 10 to 20 years. And I really feel for the people down in New Zealand. I really fa really feel bad for them. Uh, Phil Typhoid, the housing minister now in New Zealand. Um, Jacinta, the new um, uh, government that's in play right now, is trying really hard. And her platform to get elected in New Zealand was for housing. Uh, let's make housing affordable. But I'm not for affordable housing. I'm for let's make better jobs. Let's create better paying jobs. So you don't need affordable housing. You could buy any house you want instead of being stuck with what you have to get from the government. This way, you know, if you have a better paying job, you can make choices. You have more options instead of being put in a government house or low renting renter or low renting area. That, I believe in more better paying jobs than um, middle class, uh, public, pri private sector, private, I, public sector means nothing. Let's move on. Number five, it's gotten so bad in Ireland. <laughs> Number five is Ireland, 298,000 mortgages underwater. Uh, Ireland has, hasn't has recovered from its 2007 crash and now... Um, there were several more recent articles, but I wanted to kind of touch base with this one because things did get a bit better in Ireland since 2009 from this article. Underwater Mortgages, A Guide to Survival. Latest estimate shows that as many as 340,000 homeowners or one in five homes are stuck in negative equity. Okay. Now, here's the thing. I got, from all the recent articles I've been reading and discussing, I got 298,000. So it's not as bad as 340. So right now in Ireland, they're looking at 298,000 homes that are um, underwater right now. So they owe, they owe more for their homes than what they're worth, realistically, on the open market. Ireland's been fighting hard. There's about 10,000 
sorry, 11,100 people sleeping rough, homeless, and 2,800 of them are children. I like the Irish because they've been standing up and protesting against this, and the Irish aren't fighting for free housing. They, a lot of these people work one and two jobs. A lot of these people just want to be able to live a decent life instead of uh, 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 work, slave work. You know, it's it's like, um, to me, Ireland reminds me of um, house arrest. They, got, they can't do nothing outside of their house. It's almost like a house arrest for Ireland and the Irish. But you know what? The protests, the, the uh, uh, outside of the parliament has been... Catching no, uh, catching notice from other English-speaking countries, and a lot of people are starting to wake up. And this is what's causing this whole uh, yellow thingy movement. I can't really say it because it might flag my show if I talk about any yellow movements. So I'm gonna kind of uh, back off on that because I gotta talk. I gotta speak in ancient Navajo codes now, so my video doesn't get flagged. Anyway, so there it is. So this is it. Ireland. That's what I got from my numbers. Uh. Number four, England. Negative equity time bomb for banks as baby boomers cash in housing wealth. So right now in London, uh, borrowers aged 55 to 64% make up 15% of the market, double the level in 2015 the Bank of England has found. So this is becoming a problem now in England, and this is what numbers I got. 466,000 homes right now, or 466 thousand living quarters homes townhomes houses detached whatever you want to call them uh in england 466,000 right now are currently underwater and let's go now to number three so guys this is the top six of english-speaking countries mortgages that are currently underwater now let's go to number three negative equity so australia so this article is saying 386,000. This is from 2018. It's a very recent article from October. 386,000 homeowners owe the bank more than the value of their home. It doesn't make any sense because I got 798,000 mortgages underwater right now in Australia. I'm not sure why it's 386. Why this is 386 and I got um, 798,000. From all the graphs I saw, uh, all the different um, cities, populations, um, uh, mortgaged, who's mortgaged, who holds free and clear. I did a bit of work in the background here, guys, to getting this thing done for you guys. So, you know, you can hit my tip up. Uh, you can hit up my tip jar if you're bored. Anyways, I got 798000 I know there's a lot of people down under watching my transmission. Guys, can you comment below for me? Why is this saying 386? Because it does specify homeowners. And there's homes in the photo. I read the article. It doesn't specifically go into what types of homes. But I believe, I believe that um, it says right here, Total Australia. And then first home, I, that was a really good piece in this article where first home to home buyers are taking the brunt. A lot of people bought at the top of the market. A lot. So it could it be that now with new numbers from the end of Q4, it is 798,000 people underwater because 386 is pretty low uh, in comparison. I I mean, it, it would put it in, in, in fifth place, basically, or sixth place. I don't believe that, guys, from what's been happening in Australia all this time. Uh, just people leaving the cities, going, leaving the big cities and moving to small towns or like Hobart. <laughs> I love picking on Hobart. I've always wanted to go there where price levels, the average medium price for a house in Hobart was 170000 Now it's like three hundred, because people are leaving the expensive markets and people want families. People want kids. People are tired of this mortgage prison. Or, or I call it, I like to call it, I like, my new word is, 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 is uh, house arrest. House arrest mortgage. Anyways, okay, so comment below. 386, why is this number so low? Is it just houses and not bringing in the condos? Because when you factor in all the combos and uh, condos, all the people, all the investors walking away from empty condos, yeah, that's a little bit different though. This could be right in a way because a lot of Australians own, like a lot of Australia has been sold to foreign owner, like foreign investors have bought out Australia. So this technically can be right because there's less Australian proper that actually own their own homes. 
Yeah, that could be right. I, my numbers could be wrong. Well, I got 700, 798,000. Number two, Canada. Canada. There's a, a radio show called With Ross K. People keep telling me to listen to it. But I did find a show today. Uh, I didn't have time to listen to it, though. But it said that there's over a million mortgages underwater. After doing some research and background checking, I, especially with the amount of mortgages on top of mortgages that people owe, they're definitely underwater. And I got 997,000 underwater mortgages in Canada. Almost a million. So Ross K. Show was dead on, dead on right. It said on the title. Go on YouTube and look it up saying, just type in, one million homes underwater Canada, and you'll see it. That's the title of the, of, of the show. I saw that. I said, hmm, this might be right. I looked, did a background check, did just put some numbers together, squeezed a few, uh, moved over a few decibels, and I came up with 997,000 roughly homes underwater. And number one. It's kind of not fair for this one to be number one because the population per capita is different. More cities to live in, more options, because the median benchmark price is still under $200,000 for a three, four bedroom. And what am I talking about? Oh, beautiful. Millions of U.S. homeowners still underwater. Still underwater on mortgages. This is from 2018. It's a newer article. I found a few older ones, but this one compares to more what I'm talking about. 9.1% uh, are coming up short with equity a decade after the bubble burst. 713,000 old lenders at least twice as much as the home value. So America has the most LTV in the, okay, of all the English speaking world, America comes in first place for the highest loan to value. America is almost, most of the homes are double uh, value, double, double lean Okay, if the house is 100, they owe 200. If the house is worth 100, they owe 200. So America is ranks number one for the most lent out on a mortgage. Their loan to value is at negative. So they're basically not at par, but they're actually negative in a way where it's double. Instead of 10% underwater, 20%. Like New Zealand, I would say, is like 9% underwater. Ireland's 11% underwater. England's about 14% underwater right now. Australia is about... 14.5, 15% from its peak in 2017. Canada, oh, Canada is horrible. It's about 14.9 to 15% underwater. And then the United States of America is 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 like some places, some homeowners, and that's 713 of them owe twice as much. So if you took that 713, wow, that's a lot of people underwater. So, so uh right now the united states per capita it kind of it's kind of not fair because when i did some research on the united states of america with mortgages underwater i did find something very intriguing that a majority of the homes are on the west coast like vancouver where everyone's underwater right now because they raise property taxes so uh, uh washington state like king county a lot of people are underwater there because seattle's houses went through the roof when Vancouver put the foreign foreign uh, buyers tax on, a lot of foreign buyers went south to Seattle and others went east to Toronto. And then you have uh, Oregon, where it had a mass migration of Seattleites moving south to, to Portland. And then you had uh, a bunch of Californians moving north to Portland. And that brought the housing prices up to 407000 Now it's sinking to about three ninety eight. And then you go further south to uh, California. A lot of homes are underwater right now in California. Uh, the the one hit the most is is um, San Jose followed by San Diego. Um, San Francisco is a bit, a little bit, a fraction, but still San Francisco is staying strong. But that's what I found out in my analysis. The whole West Coast is pretty much underwater, and I'm not saying physically, but their mortgages are underwater. They owe more than what their value of their property is worth. Where other states right now, like uh, Salt Lake City, Utah, uh, Reno, Nevada, Las Vegas, Arizona, and New Mexico, Las Cruces, all those prices are skyrocketing because everyone's leaving the West Coast to find 
the green space on the other side of the mountain. Anyways, guys, it is I, Mike Martins. I want to thank everyone for tipping me in the tip jar. Hit me up in the tip jar on PayPal. I really appreciate it. It means a lot to me. And it gets this transmission rolling. And guys, if you, <laughs> I had somebody, I got a couple of people in the last couple of days sending me uh, links to other videos. And they would write a comment below on the other video, not my video. Hey, there's a guy that made a video so similar like this three days ago. So there's a lot of people mirroring videos out there. I'm one of, I think I'm the first to do this. Top six uh, English speaking countries that are underwater. There's not a lot of people that cover as much ground as I do when it comes to English speaking countries and uh, mortgages and mortgage loan to values and, and equity availability and uh, vacant homes. Uh, foreign investing in English-speaking countries. There's not a lot of people that tackle that much like I do, and I've been doing it for, with the whole English-speaking world, it's just over four years now. Because one of my first Do Not Buy in Australia videos I did four years ago was taken down, and I got a strike on my channel. And there's no, it's like me talking in my backyard. And I was telling Australian people to watch out that it's a mortgage debt prison, it's a mortgage powder keg. And now my new one is, uh, 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 home prison, or what do you call it? Um, house arrest. House arrest mortgage. <laughs> Let me know what you guys think. I'd like to know. I'd like to pick your brains, guys. Why am I getting different numbers for Australia? I'm getting something completely different from my analysis. Again, number six, New Zealand, 152,000. Number five, Ireland, 298,000. Number four, England, 466,000. Number three, Australia, 798,000. Number two, Canada, 997,000. Number one, United States of America, 1.8 million houses that are in negative equity, and a majority of them are on the West Coast. And I hope Better Dwelling does an article about this because they usually do good articles, and I hope Better Dwelling is watching this right now and they could do an article um, about what's happening with English-speaking countries as a whole. It's, it's good to know because, remember, once one domino falls, the rest fall in 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 secession or whatever you want to call it. Mike Martin's here. Thanks for watching. Big hug to everyone and thanks for hitting me up in the tip jar.